আপনারা দেখছেন পিবিউ নিউজ কোচবিহার পঞ্চানন বর্মা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের নিজস্ব ইউটিউব চ্যানেল হাই স্টুডেন্টস আই হোপ ইউ আর ডুইং ফাইন ইন ইউর হোম টুডে আই এম গোয়িং টু ডিসকাস অ্যাবাউট ডিজাইনিং দ্য অর্গ্যানিক কেমিস্ট্রি অ্যান্ড দিস ইজ ফর সেকেন্ড সেমিস্টার সো অর্গ্যানিক কেমিস্ট্রি পেপার আই হোপ ইউ উইল এনজয় দিস সেশন দিস চ্যাপ্টার ইজ mainly for the second semester organic chemistry paper so first come to role of synthetic chemistry so the role of synthetic chemistry as you have seen here is of four types one is that we generally use the synthetic chemistry to know more about the organic chemistry so which is presented in here second we do the synthetic chemistry in order to synthesize some materials like plastic uh, or the other compounds so the uh, synthetic chemistry is also essential to synthesize some materials also the synthetic chemistry is important in the biological environment like within the cells or within our body the different synthetical chemistry takes place like synthesis of like producing different organic compounds etc and the last of all that is now which is very important is the medicinal chemistry so as we all know that in this pandemic situation of the covid 19 disease for the therapy hydroxychloroquine in everybody wants the hydroxychloroquine in so this hydroxychloroquine is also can be synthesized by synthetic chemistry so in general i would say that synthetic chemistry is essential for chemistry as well as for synthesizing materials biology and the medicine so today we are going to cover this topic first one is the introduction second one is the technical terms which is related to the synthetic chemistry the third one is the designing and the synthetic strategy fourth one is the retrosynthesis analysis and the fifth one is the total synthesis analysis and synthesis the sixth one is the linear and the convergent synthesis means how they differ and what are the approaches and the last one is i'll going to discuss some examples relating to the synthetic organic chemistry first one is a technical term now come that everybody is now aware is the total synthesis so what do you mean by total synthesis the total synthesis is the chemical synthesis of a molecule from a relatively simpler starting material so you mean that whatever the commercially available starting material is available if we start from that and synthesize a complex molecule with it then it's a total synthesis next one is the semi synthesis so synthesis of a given molecule from an advanced precursor related to it so what does it mean it means that suppose you are climbing stairs of 100 steps and you go to 20 stairs by elevator and now you complete 21 to 100 steps by your own so this is like that one the semi synthesis is like that one so from an advanced precursor you go and simply complete the rest of it the third one is the formal synthesis so what is the formal synthesis formal synthesis is the uh, synthesis of the key intermediate that had already been converted into the target molecule like up to certain um, steps you synthesize it in a different way and somebody from that step or some researchers from that step has already reported the synthesis of the final compound with it so this is a formal synthesis Man means you are synthesizing a key intermediate by in a different way and already the other two step or three step to to the target molecule has been reported the fourth one is the partial synthesis so in the partial synthesis it's the synthesis of a portion of a natural product next come is the need for synthesis so in the need for synthesis it means that uh, first one is for 
ex scientific excitement and satisfaction. So, why do uh, we do this synthesis? So, the scientific excitement is that so in, in synthesizing the molecule sometimes we require uh, easily available the starting material. So, to frame our reaction so that we can start from the easily available starting material is sometimes exciting to us and also the satisfaction of synthesizing the total synthesis is also taken into consideration. The next one in the earlier days when there was no NMR, UV or IR, then researchers used to do the synthesis uh, uh, of the starting of the target molecule and then they used to confirm the structure that what they get from it. Uh, uh, so, in doing it, uh, the, the, so they do the synthesis and in every step they used to compare the boiling point and the CHN analysis and uh, so that in order to confirm its structure with the known target molecule. Now, the third one is the testing of the new reagents and catalysts. So, sometimes the new reagents and catalyst comes in the market. So, whether that works for the different reagents or not that we can also see through uh, this synthesis. The fourth one is the discovery of the new chemistry. So, this is quite interesting to all the organic synthetic researchers because every day a thousand new reactions were discovered in a organic chemistry lab. Then the next one is the structure activity relationship. So, this one is important for the medicinal uses as because the, uh, the uh, as because from this uh, structural activity uh, relationship we can discover the new drugs which will be much helpful for the uh, living for our for the human beings. So, this one is also important. Then the next one is application in everyday life. So, obviously the synthesis in a synthetic way different uh, the, the um, perfumes, different foods uh, and also the different materials are synthesized which we use in day to day life. And the last one and the most important one is the application in medicine, biology and in the material science. So, which I have discussed previously that by the synthet organic synthesis all the synthetic drugs which you get in the pharmacy are been synthesized. There are many biological reactions that takes place in our body and can be mimicked in through this synthesis and also the lot of material science there it has its application in lot of the material science. Then comes the is retro synthetic analysis. So, what do you mean by retro synthetic analysis? So, retro synthetic uh, retro synthesis is the process of deconstructing a target molecule into readily available starting materials by the means of imaginary breaking bonds that is the disconnection. So, uh, and the conversion of one functional group into another which is a functional group interaction in interconversion. So, it means that if you are given a, a final compound then you have to synthesize it from a very simple starting material. So, you have to get an idea that what will be the simple starting material simply by disconnecting the bond uh, from it and you will, will get the so that you can start it from a very simple uh, commercially available starting material. The next one is the disconnection. So, this disconnection is the reverse operation to a reaction. So, disconnection the symbol of disconnection is something like this one. It should not be a single arrow because this arrow is the forward reaction, this arrow denotes the forward reaction. So, it is strictly no no. So, disconnection means it is simply like this one which show means it is the reverse reaction. So, disconnection is a reverse operation of a, a reaction uh, and an imaginary cleavage of bond to break the molecule into the starting material. So, here some um, short form or abbreviations will be used and one is the target molecule. So, which one is to be synthesized? So, we in abbreviation we call it as a TM, 
the second one is the functional group interconversion which is the FGI and the third one is the synthon which is the fragment resulting from the disconnection and the fourth one is the synthetic equivalent which is the actual substrate used for the forward synthesis. So, these four are the uh, in, uh, important terms which will be utilized in the next few slides. So, now come to common acceptor synthons. So, as you can see here the synthon, so this is a synthon and this is a synthetic equivalent. So, it means that when we disconnect an alkyl cation that is a R plus so, it means that its synthetic equivalent can be RCL, RBR or RI as well as ROTS. So, this OTS is a good living group because OTS is a good living group. Similarly, when aryl cation is to be disconnected from a, from a molecule, it means that its previous so or the precursors can be uh, this aryl diazonium compound when an acylium ion is used when an acylium ion is used you know, or disconnected from a molecule it means that and uh, it can be this formyl chloride so it is the formyl chloride and which and uh, we from which we will get it then the third one is this acylium so where this is of h here so, if the alkyl group means R is in here, then we can think of uh, this alkyl halide like RCOCl or R amide or ester. If we think of this acylium ion, so which where this is OHC plus and O all bond, then we can think that these synthons can be synthesized from carbon dioxide. So, similarly for these acylium uh, means this carbocation, this carbocation, this carbocation. So, for all these the common synthetic equivalent we can think is in this way. I will explain how these things will come into play when we will do the real synthesis in the next few slides. Next one is the common donor synthon. So, that one is a common acceptor and this one is a donor. So, there minus or negative ion is there. So, here R minus for R minus we generally think of this organo uh, alkyl reagent. So, no, no, uh, so we will think of uh, the organo metallic reagent. So, like RMGX, RLI, RCU2LI etcetera. So, which can be easily synthesized from Rx. For cyanide we can think of sodium cyanide or HCN. For this acetylide also we will think of this organometallic reagent as well as for this, uh, this anions and the other anions. Now come to one example. So, now I will explain you one example which is a total synthesis. So, uh, in this molecule now we have to synthesize this target molecule which is a ketone. So, how can we do the retrosynthetic analysis of it? So, first we can do is that we will change the function. So, there will be a functional group interconversion. So, by the functional FGI is the functional group interconversion. So, by functional group interconversion basically we will change the ketone to alcohol and then by CC disconnection there is a carbon carbon bond will be disconnected and we will get a negative that is a donor synthon as well as the acceptor synthon. Now, we all know in the previous slide that this donor synthon is nothing but can be generated from this organometallic reagent. So, which is a Grignard reagent here and the acceptor synthon is nothing but it can be generated from this aldehyde. So, now if we do the disconnection means, so how do we synthesize this Grignard reagent? This Grignard reagent can also be synthesized from the alkyl halide. So, this one is the alkyl halide. So, we can synthesize that. So, now we will go in the forward reaction. So, forward reaction is this synthesis A. So, here we will take the alkyl halide which is a propyl bromide, then treat it with a magnesium ether whereby it forms a Grignard reagent propyl magnesium bromide 
and this propyl magnesium bromide was then further treated with aldehyde uh, and then hydrolyzed to get it the alcohol and then this alcohol when treated with pyridinium chlorochromate so here it is pyridinium chlorochromate so the, then there is a functional group interconversion takes place leading to the formation of this ketone so in this way we can synthesize this molecule starting from this propyl bromide and this is how we plan for the synthesis of it start from the simple starting material so this is a one way of analysis so what will be the other way of analysis so other way of analysis is something like this one so in the previous slide i have shown you the cleavage from this portion now in this slide i will show you the cleavage from the other portion so in this portion if we cleave it then this will be the acceptor synthon and this will be the donut synthon so where there is a ph minus is there anion is there so this ph anion can be generated by ph2 coli and this co2 ph2 coli can be generated from phenyl lithium and which in turn can be synthesized from uh, phenyl that is a benzene phenyl bromide and this acceptor synthon can be synthesized from acid chloride so now how do we synthesize from this starting simple starting material so here we'll take the phenyl bromide then treat it with n butyl lithium to form the ph li and then this ph li was treated with copper bromide in thf to form the cuprate reagent and this cuprate reagent uh, further treated with this butanoyl chloride to get the target molecule which is this ketone so it is quite simple right so in one uh, slide i have shown you the disconnection from this portion and in this slide i have shown you the disconnection from the other portion next come is the linear and convergent synthesis so what do you mean by linear synthesis and what do you mean by convergent synthesis so this linear synthesis means the synthesis of a target molecule in a linear fashion so and the convergent synthesis means it's converging means synthesis of two or more fragments and then couple them in a later stage to obtain the target molecule so so in the linear synthesis it take place from step by step it means from uh, we start it from a then go to b then go to c then go to d e f etc and if we consider for the five step and each step yields 90% it means that a to b is 90% and b to c is 81% now somebody may think that how it becomes a 81% it is because so 90% so here b is 90 right so 90 of 90% it means 81% and uh, effective yield starting from a so now c is 81% now c to d conversion is 90% right because every step it gives a 90% yield and so this 81% mm, so with the 81% if we start from the 81% so 90% of 81% is nothing but it is something equivalent to 73% now d to e is 66% similarly as well as e to f is 59% now if we do so this one is a linear synthesis so if we start from one and in consecutive steps we go from the product which get it and move to the next step now for this convergent synthesis we st we start from the two different approaches so one is in this way a to b 90% b to c is 81% and d to e is 90% similarly e to f is an 81% now if we combine c and f to make the g then the total yield will be is 73% it makes that it means that we are synthesizing the final compound g but 
here since we start from the two different approaches therefore the, the here the C and F the starting material yield are much more and hence if we combine both of them we will end up in a greater yield. So, obviously there are some advantage of the convergence synthesis one is that it is a shorter route to get the starting material it is also simpler to execute because it is only uh, you have the most of the starting material here. So, it is easier to execute uh, and also it has a higher overall yield as you will see here it is 73 percent and if we go from F to G is obviously that will be much more reduced there right. So, it will be have a higher overall yield it has a better ma material balance and supply uh, than that of the other uh, this linear way because uh, here the starting material A. So, A to G the final product it takes place within 3 steps and D to G it takes place within 3 steps. So, it means that uh, these are the common starting material which we have. So, it means that we have a better material balance as well as the supply. So, this is how the linear and convergent synthesis uh, they, they compare and the advantage of the uh, convergent synthesis. So, now there is an example. So, there are many examples of um, these uh, retro synthesis way and how to do the formal synthesis, but taken into account as we all know that right now there is a pandemic situation arises because of the COVID-19 and so I thought that uh, why do not I discuss something or synthesis relating to this COVID-19 drugs. So, these you see here these six molecule which are you have seen here on the board are now the hot favorite for the for the therapy of the COVID-19 and I think you all know about this chloroquine in and hydroxychloroquine in because people are now looking for these two compounds uh, for the therapy of the COVID-19 diseases as well as there are these four compounds this remdesivir, flavipiravir, lopinavir and the ritonavir. So, these compounds are also been tested for the therapeutic of the uh, COVID-19 diseases and the, uh, the researchers and the doctors find good results by using these compounds or these drugs on patients. So, today I will discuss uh, the retrosynthesis pathway as well as the synthetic pathway for few of these molecules. So, that you can also become excited and also know how to do the retrosynthetic analysis of these uh, molecules and also how to synthesize these molecules in the lab. So, first come is the chloroquinine and hydroxychloroquinine. So, this is quite a simple molecule as you can see and it has a common intermediate as we, I, which I have already marked it with a blue one you see. So, this uh, quinoline portion is common for both of this compound and you can also see here that uh, in one of the compound that is in hydroxychloroquine the ethyl group the last OH was replaced the last H was replaced with a OH group here. So, it means that if we do the retrosynthetic analysis of this chloroquine so this one is chloroquine then it can be done in this way. So, this chloroquine on uh, breaking it from here we can start from the compound 21. So, this one is a amine here. So, it is a diamine one is a primary amine here present and one is a tertiary amine pre here present and the other portion is here the 4, 7 chloroquine in, dichloroquine in, quinoline. So, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, uh, um, 4, 7 dichloroquine in. and uh, in case of hydroxychloroquine in, so this portion is common and the other portion is also uh, here the diamine is present here one primary amine one secondary amine and an alcohol is present over there. And the next one is this how to synthesize this 4,7 uh, dichloroquinoline. 
So, it can be synthesized easily from metachloroaniline. So, in the next slides, I will show you how to synthesize these things from this simple starting material. So, synthesis of chloroquinoline. So, in the synthesis of chloroquinoline, so this is a metachloroaniline. Uh, so, this one is a metachloroaniline. So, when it was treated with ethoxy methylene mal malonoid ester, so this one is ethoxy methylene malonoid ester, then here initially this addition takes place. So, it means that this amine will go and attack this double bond and here OET will be removed leading to the formation of this intermediate 9 which is a diester. Now, when it was heated uh, in an, a suitable con temperature, then it will give rise to this compound 10, this quinoline derivative. So, this quinoline derivative have this hydroxy group as well as this ester group. Now, when this compound 10 was treated with sodium hydroxide, then the ester, this ester was cleaved leading to the formation of hydroxy as well as acid. So, then this acid is produced here and when this acid was heated at 250 degree centigrade, then the decarboxylation of this carboxylic acid takes place. So, this decarboxylation takes place to give rise to this hydroxychloroquinoline. So, this hydroxychloroquinoline when treated with phosphorus oxychloride or POCl3, it will give rise to this 4,7-dichloroquinoline 22. You see, it is simple. So, next one is the synthesis of the other portion that is 21. So, here we start with compound 30. So, this compound 30 is nothing, but as we all know, it is ethyl acetoacetate. So, it is ethyl acetoacetate. So, when this ethyl acetoacetate was treated with sodium, then it forms here this anion because this hydrogen is much more acidic in nature. Then this anion will go and attack this chlorine here, this carbon here and the chlorine get removed in order to synthesize this compound 31. The 31 then when treated with HCl, then the ester hydrolysis takes place. The ester hydrolysis, so when this ester hydrolysis takes place, it gives rise to this uh, beta keto acid and when the beta keto acid forms and it heated and we heat it, then the decarboxylation of the carboxylic acid takes place leading to the formation of this ketone. So, this ketone is formed, it is almost now become ready and uh, to give, prepare the compound 21. So, when we treat it with hydrogen, ammonia in presence of rani nickel, it there the reductive amination takes place leading to the formation of amine. So, somebody may think that here the reduction takes place how the amine group comes here. So, as you can see here that there is an ammonia here. So, first this ammonia go and it forms uh, with this ketone and imine. So, double bond NH imine and in situ the reduction takes place in presence of rani nickel and hydrogen and it forms here the amine. So, so this amine and this chlorine, this compound 21 and 22 are now ready for coupling. So, this is a convergent synthesis. So, this is a convergent synthesis because you can see now we synthesize these two compound, compound 21 and compound 22 from two different sources and in two different routes and then we combine both of them to make the final compound which is chloroquinine. So, this is how we synthesize the chloroquinine and there are also various other methods that are available in the literature and this is only one of them. So, obviously it will give you an idea right. So, how the life saving drugs or the hot drugs 
which are now in this COVID-19 cases and chloroquine is synthesized. The next one is the synthesis of hydrochloroquine. So, it also takes place in the similar way because as you can see in the last two slides, in the last last, uh, last last slides that it has a common intermediate of this 4,7-dichloroquinoline, so which is compound 22. So, I am not going to um, describe that how this compound 22 here, I will just simply move and show you that how the compound 24 is synthesized. So, 24 for the synthesis of tw compound 24 will start with this compound 33 which is nothing but it is a uh, uh, pentanone with a chloro uh, derivative here. So, we can uh, number if we get the numbering to it. So, obviously it will be like 5 chloro pentanone and when it was treated with this secondary amine amino alcohol, so this one is secondary amino alcohol, then this amine will go and attack this chlorine because this and the uh, nucleophilicity of this nitrogen is more than that of alcohol. So, obviously, this amine will go and attack the carbon here and it will replace the chlorine leading to the formation of compound 34. Now, once the compound 34 has been prepared, now it is the same way as that for chloroquine. That means, we have to uh, functional group interconversion, we have to change this ketone to amine. So, how do we change the ketone to amine? We will just simply treat it with ammonia and in C2, we will apply the hydrogen and rani nickel. So, where first this ketone uh, will form the imine and then that imine will soon be reduced to ammonia, uh, to amine, to primary amine. So, now this 24 is ready for coupling reaction as well as the compound 22. So, the next step is convergent synthesis. So, convergent, so like before in this convergent synthesis and the compound 22 has already been synthesized and compound 24 is now already I have shown you the synthesis of compound 24. Now, if we combine these two, we will synthesize this hydroxychloroquine. So, and so this is a very simple method of synthesizing the hydroxychloroquine and you see the only structural difference between this hydroxychloroquine and the chloroquine is the presence of this OH. But this, so this is the retrosynthesis uh, way of synthesizing this hydroxychloroquine and the previously and so this is the uh, way of synthesizing the chloroquine. So, only difference is the presence of this 2 OH group. Next uh, synthesis I will discuss about the flavipiravir. So, this is a heterocyclic compound as you can see here. So, it is a heterocyclic compound of very simple structure and uh, here one thing this fluorine, this fluorine can be detached and we can add this fluorine in the later part of the molecule and we can synthesize this flavipiravir in, in more than two ways. So, here only the two ways we have shown it, but we can synthesize in, in various or several methods. And in one method I have, I will show you today, so that one is through linear synthesis. So, in the linear synthesis, what I will show you here that we will start from this compound, this hydrocyclic compound, and, uh, compound 35. So, it contains an amide and alcohol. So, when we treat it with potassium nitrate and sulfuric acid, so which is which will produce a nitrating mixture, uh, it uh, so there, so here it will form this nitrate. So, so, it will form here this nitro, right. So, uh, here there is an addition of the nitro group takes place. Then when we treat it with the uh, POCl3 in pyridine, then here the decarboxylation takes place along with uh, this OH will transformed into a chlorine. 
so here in in presence of pocl3 here the dehydro dehydroxylation dehydroxylation takes place along with the conversion of oh to chlorine so here the cyanide is prepared and here the chlorine now when we treat it with the potassium fluoride and the phase transfer catalyst in dmso then these chloride and this chloride is replaced with a fluoride so this one is a fluoride here this one is a fluoride here so we will replace two chlorine with a two fluoride by simply adding the potassium fluoride and a phase transfer catalyst in dmso now once this compound 43 is formed then this compound 43 when treated with potassium carbonate and h2o2 then this cyanide again oxid there here the hydroxylation takes place or the oxidation takes place leading to the formation of this amide so now this amide is almost ready now this structure is almost ready only difference is that this oh has to be there so here there is a fluorine and this oh so here we will replace this fluorine selectively by treating it with sodium bicarbonate uh, and it will give rise to this OH. So, as you can see that these compounds, so this flavipiravir is already been applied to the patients in Japan uh, and this hydroxychloroquine and the chlor chloroquine. So, those things are already uh, applied to the, uh, are already given to the patients with the COVID-19 and uh, worldwide. Uh, I hope you know little bit about the synthesis of it and also the retrosynthesis of it and you will enjoy this synthesis then the last i will say that stay home stay safe uh, and just enjoy the today's lecture thank you